Hello, I got what I needed from the grocery store, but stuff still happened. So what's up? Hey, Zeus, knock it off. I'm putting you on notice, Zeus, because I'm scared. A 51-year-old cattle rancher in Colorado was killed when he was struck by lightning alongside a hundred of his cattle. Now, of the hundred cattle who were affected by the lightning strike, 34 died. The rest of them survived. But that's a lot of cattle, and whoa! Mike Morgan, the rancher who was very unfortunate, was out there feeding the cattle. He was in a trailer when the lightning struck in the big open pasture. His wife and father-in-law were nearby. They saw it happen. They were affected a little bit, but they, they survived. My goodness, this man was a, a cattle rancher, right? So like, he probably wasn't just arbitrarily feeding cows in an open pasture in the middle of a storm. Like this was probably a freak bolt. Ranchers aren't famously known for having their cattle exposed to the obvious dangers of the elements. So I can't imagine. Zap, I will, if I'm like outside and I have to go like 20 feet, if I hear thunder, I'll be like, hmm, hustling. I know it's unlikely. I know it's literally used as like an example of a thing that's super rare. I, we just live in a snow globe of chaos. One day you wake up and entropy says no. So I don't know, hug your dog. I strive to do my best to bring you nothing but the facts. And so let me bring you a fact. The Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. And also you can go listen to that album that they released that is what there's one copy of it. You can go listen to it in Tasmania at a museum for a ticketed event only this month, but you can listen. If you're lost, let me catch you up. There was a Wu-Tang Clan album that dropped in 2015 and they only made one copy of it. There was a lot of controversy around that decision, even within said clan of the Wu-Tang. And yet here we are. You may recall that Martin Shkreli, the pharma bro who jacked up all those medication prices, he purchased the album when it, when it came out, only to have it seized as part of an asset forfeiture after all the crimes that he did. So for a spell, the only entity that had ownership of this Wu-Tang album was the US State Department. He eventually sold it off. It is now on loan to the Museum of Old and New Art in Tasmania, where they're going to do a few listenings of it. So if you wanna, if you wanna hear the album, now's your chance. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Uh, it's me, uh, I'm ByteDance. And the clock is ticking for me, cause I'm ByteDance and laws. Every day, a day passes, which means that we're closer to the day that TikTok is supposed to divest to be able to continue working in the US. That's how time goes. And while TikTok strongly maintains that divestment is a non-starter from a economic and technical and business perspective, there's still some stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Or at least there's reports of stuff happening. A report from Reuters says that TikTok is trying to separate out their like suggestion algorithm, which apparently amounts to millions of lines of code. The goal would be to separate it out from the rest of their codes. So they can make like a US centric version or something like that. Now, as somebody who worked in tech for quite some time, it's probably not like millions of lines of code that form the algorithm for the actual suggestion thing, but this is still probably a huge undertaking to try to finish before the deadline in like less than a year. At the same time, after this report came out from Reuters, TikTok was like, nah, Reuters is wrong. To which Reuters responded, nah, we stand by our reporting, we're right. So the whole situation is it's just very clear. That makes it easy. Will there be a ceasefire? It depends on who you ask and probably not. I just wanna speak real clear and directly to you that when I was putting this segment together, I found myself in disbelief at just how absurd what I was reading was. Because Biden came out and was like, hey, uh, Israel agreed to a framework for a ceasefire. And then Israel was like, now nah, we didn't. Netanyahu wants to destroy Hamas entirely before even considering a ceasefire, which basically just means leveling Gaza. It's a lot easier to claim that land as your own if there's not those pesky residents there. But the Biden administration trying to look at all like they have a handle on any of this reiterated like, no, no, uh, Israel proposed a framework of their own design that they're going to agree to that will lead to a ceasefire. To which an aide to Netanyahu and to some degree Netanyahu himself were like, yes, we agreed to that despite it being a bad deal. At which point, basically everyone in the upper leadership of Israel was like, nah, 
We're never taking this deal. That's not good. I'll leave if there's peace. And so given that there's been this weird back and forth, when asked for clarity from the State Department, the US State Department, they were like, well, okay, it, 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 it was Israel's proposal after we did some serious diplomacy with them, which is a not very clever way of saying, we came to them and said, please, dear God, accept a ceasefire. And they said, no, but we're going to just pretend that they said yes, in the hopes that that works. At the end of the day, they don't want the hostages home. The hostages being there are how they can continue justifying their assault on Gaza. The leadership of Israel knows that they can get away with what they're doing, as long as the US has their backs, which we always will. Biden already was like, oh, uh, Rafa's a red line, but not not that Rafa, uh, the, the other Rafa. Yeah, they, they bombed um, a lot of it, and there's tanks there, uh, but I had a, what I, uh, this specific, if you open up Google Maps, right? Let me just draw this line here. Just, does anybody have a gold post I can borrow? Meanwhile, little bonus, OpenAI announced that they identified Israel and Russia using their systems to generate and disseminate propaganda in multiple languages. I love that we have a propaganda generation machine that's just, on the internet. Gaming. Capcom is reportedly working on remakes of Resident Evil Code Veronica and Resident Evil Zero. If there are anything like the Resident Evil 4 remakes, hype? Sony hosted their State of Play event. They had a whole bunch of announcements, including God of War Ragnarok's port to the PC this year, as well as a new like Astrobot game and a whole bunch of other announcements. Wildermyth, which is a really awesome group-based role-playing, storytelling comic book game, uh, is getting a final expansion. Go check it out if you haven't seen it before. And No Man's Sky is getting another update, this time called Adrift. No Man's Sky, famous for its like botched launch followed by incredible levels of dedication from the development team to actually deliver on making it a great game. Well done, y'all. This new update's gonna bring a temporary game mode that will let you basically be alone in the universe. It's gonna get rid of virtually every other entity. No stores, no shops, you're on your own survive. It's actually pretty rad. That's actually pretty rad. Lightning round. Mexico has elected Claudia Scheinbaum to their presidency. She's the first woman to hold the seat and is also a climate scientist. The next version of iOS is apparently going to have an AI emoji generator. Be, uh, it's gonna get weird, y'all. YouTube is continuing their attack on ad blockers and they're now experimenting with just whole ass blocking videos and skipping videos or just preventing you from watching more videos after a certain amount if they detect that you're using an ad blocker. A cast extra from Home Alone 2 was recently found guilty of 34 felony charges. North Korea is reportedly dropping bags of trash and shit on South Korea using balloons. Someone swatted the mother of a cop who was injured in January 6th, and then like went on to threaten to shoot up a school related to the cop. People are busted. Like just, just some people, not everybody is busted, but some people are busted. And finally for today, Google has confirmed the authenticity of leaked internal documents that explain how their search engine works. It contradicts a lot of the stuff that has been said publicly to like the SEO industry. God, I hate that concept, but it's kind of a big deal because like, if you know how to leverage Google better, you get to leverage you get seen. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Stuff Keeps Happening. Head to skh.news for sources, bonus content, and my secret pirated copy of the Wu-Tang album. My name is Endeavorance. I'll be back on Monday. Take care and be well.